Hey y'all, here we go again with another flipped video. Today we're going to be looking at the Renaissance and the Scientific Revolution. There was a lot of changes happening in Europe after the medieval period that gave way to a new period because of the trade and cultural diffusion that had occurred during the Middle Ages. This new way of thinking led to the Renaissance and other scientific discoveries. The essential questions we're going to focus on in this video are what changes in society and in cities stimulated the Renaissance, and what contributions did artists and writers make to the Renaissance, and Golden Rock historians will analyze the way growth in trade and an interest in classical Greece and Rome led to the Renaissance, and evaluate the contributions that our artists and writers made to the Renaissance. While you're watching, make sure that you're taking good notes in either Cornell or outline format like we've talked about in class. It's okay if you need to pause or rewind the video to make sure that you uh, understand the content and you're taking good notes. The Black Death, starvation, and warfare had taken over Europe since about 1300. The decrease in population had allowed for farmers to produce more food than they needed, and so food prices declined and a time of prosperity began. Different geographic areas began to specialize on certain products and trade for the products that they did not produce. Italy started to be divided into several city-states, the large cities st states of Florence, Milan, and Venice in the north, and then the papal states in the south. The northern city-states of Florence, Milan, and Venice were mainly made up of nobles, merchants, and artisans. The nobles sought to display their wealth through the arts, painting, sculptures, and architecture, and this would lead to the Renaissance. Here you can see what in Europe looked like at the very beginning of the Renaissance. Okay, the papal states are down in the bottom half of Italy. The Holy Roman Empire still exists. The Ottoman Empire um, is mainly taken over um, the Middle East. As the economy and social structure started to change, new ideas also began to appear. The Renaissance, which is French for rebirth, starts in Italy and was a period of renewed interest in remarkable developments in art, literature, science, and learning, mainly related to the classics, which were part of the period of Greece and Rome. There was a couple causes of the Renaissance. One, there was an increased trade with Asia and other regions, such as as a result of the Crusades. That increased trade resulted in cultural diffusion, which allowed for new ideas to reach Europe. There was also a growth of wealthy city-states in Italy, which would lead to the wealth a base for buying art and uh, focusing on art. There was also a renewed interest in classical learning of Greece and Rome, which led to looking at philosophers, etc. There was a rise of rich and powerful merchants who became supporters of the arts, increased desire for scientific and technical knowledge, and a desire to beautify the cities. Many Greek scholars sought refuge in Italy from the Ottomans and brought philosophers' work with them. As the Italians began to read that art, they began to think about art, philosophy, and science in different ways than they had previously in line with the church. The Renaissance teachings emphasize the idea of humanism. This focused mainly on human achievement and human nature. The fathers of humanism are Boccaccio and Petrarch. The humanists rediscovered texts on anatomy, geography, and astronomy. But during the Renaissance, because of this focus on humanism, the church was no longer seen as a source of stability and peace, and secularism evolved. Secularism is a focus on what's here on earth rather than a religious focus. This means that people were more focused on what humans were doing than what on God was doing. The humanists argued that in the individual achievement and education could be fully expressed only if people used their talents and abilities to service their city. There became this ideal Renaissance man, or someone who studied the classics but was a man of action, or a Renaissance woman who was serious but amusing, had a knowledge of Latin and Greek, and could wade as well as write. When scholars in the Middle Ages had questions about the natural world, or Earth, they sought answers from the traditional authorities mainly the church. The medieval thinking was mainly geocentric, meaning that the earth was the center or the centric part of the universe, and that all the sun and moon and planets revolved around the earth. This thought was because we are the center of God's world. Following the Crusades, new scientific advancements came from the Middle East that began posing and testing theories about this natural world. This way of thinking became known as the scientific revolution and led to the development of the scientific method that was used to investigate and try out different problems. They would identify the problem, form a hypothesis, and then finally perform experiments to make sense of the experiments that they did. Copernicus came to the conclusion that the sun, not the earth, was the center of the whole solar system. This was directly in um, contradiction with the geocentric theory that was supported by the church. He was the first scientist to make a model of the solar system. Galileo supported Copernicus's theory, and therefore he was mainly um, hurt by the church because of that. He discovered Saturn, the craters on the moon, and the Milky Way. 
Sir Isaac Newton changed the world of science through his discovery of gravity by combining astronomy, physics, and mathematics. European doctors had also began to get different pieces of information from pharmacists and doctors in the Middle East and in uh, Africa and had gotten um, more information about human anatomy. Previously, they had relied on the work of Galen, who was a Greek physician, but he had never dissected a human body. During the Renaissance, Vesalius came known for his work on the body because he dissected the bodies of criminals. Due to the innovations of magnifying glasses and new uh, microscopes, Robert Hooke also discovered the appearance of cells. Robert Boyle then also discovered the, the um, atoms and molecules within cells. Following the scientific revolution, the church had previously been the primary resource, but now after the scientific revolution, that those that church was not the primary resource anymore. The scientists wanted to explain the world through reason, while the church rejected reason as the enemy to faith. They re relied on faith alone. Heliocentric theory directly challenged the church and said because they believed in geocentric theory. But as the scientific revolution took off and people began to question the earth, they also began questioning other parts of society like government, religion, education, and economic theory. One of the most influential books of the time was The Prince by Machiavelli that encouraged rulers to do whatever necessary to maintain political power, even if it was viewed as cruel. Many of the scientists during the Renaissance focused on human sciences like history, geography, and politics, and they began to question the world around them. When they questioned the world around them, they were also directly challenging the church and the church's ideas about nature. Copernicus suggested that the sun sat at the middle of the universe and that Galileo backed up that idea, which directly went against the church. Unlike medieval artists that used art to symbolize religion, the Renaissance artists mainly tried to depict the things that they observed in nature. This was different than medieval artists who focused more on geometric shapes and other types of symbology so as to avoid adultery, adul idolatry or the use of idols. They believed that painting humans would make people celebrate those humans more so than God. The nobles had ordered their art from artists and paid them a certain price for a certain piece of art. The wealthy then began to compete against one another, trying to display their wealth through the purchase of artwork. Previously, they had done this through land, but now they're doing it through beautiful pieces of art. In Florence, the wealthy and powerful Medici family was one of the largest supporters of the arts in the area. Renaissance artists started to paint the natural world as realistically as possible. If you look in the top right-hand corner, you can see a picture of three men, and you can see the burrows between their eyes, the pieces, individual pieces of hair. They look very realistic, and they're also in perspective, meaning that they look like a human shape in it, um, and it's human size. Okay? And so they focus on human beings as their main subject matter and tried to paint them as realistically as possible. Again, that focus on humanism. Architecturally, many churches began to incorporate um, architectural features from Greece and Rome, like domes and arches. Some of the greatest artists of the time period was Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. Da Vinci was a painter, a writer, an inventor, an architect, engineer, mathematician, musician, and philosopher. He did it all. He closely studied the human fig figure, and many of our anatomical discoveries came from him. He also created hundreds of drawings that would later become inventions like tanks and airplanes. His most famous works of art were the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper. Michelangelo was a Renaissance sculptor who also studied the human anatomy in order to make his sculptures more like life. His most famous sculpture was David to the right. Michelangelo also gained fame for the painting of the Sistine Chapel that personalized many of the Old Testament Bible characters that would be used to help explain um, biblical texts. By the 1500s, the ideas of the Renaissance had reached the growing cities in the north, London, Paris, Amsterdam, and others. Trade was mainly the way in which people were able to use that. In addition, the development of the pr printing press allowed for the Renaissance texts from the philosophers to travel northward. The Hanseatic League, which was a trade league um, that helped to spread knowledge, um, they began helping the ideas to travel north as well as they began trading with when people from Italy to the north. Johannes Gutenberg invented the printing press during this time period when he cast the letters of the alphabet onto metal plates and into a wooden press. This allowed for text to be printed quickly on both sides of a sheet of paper, thus producing books and other materials quicker and cheaper. The first book ever printed was the Bible, and the printing press allowed for the ideas to spread quickly because people could now read about them rather than hearing about them just from word of mouth. 
So northern philosophers also started to combine Christian ideas with humanism to create what's called Christian humanism. Erasmus, a priest in the Netherlands, wrote about the need for a pure Christian life, getting away from the rituals and politics of the church that had been created through um, social hierarchy and other forms. Sir Thomas More, utopia, started setting a vision for a perfect society based on reason, a Christian society based on reason. And William Shakespeare started to write plays based on his knowledge of human nature and the Renaissance ideas to help even the uneducated understand the Renaissance ideas of humanism and secularism. And on the North, artists such as Albrecht used Italian techniques of realism and the Northern style of painting to make a more darker um, Renaissance art. Now that you've finished the taking your notes, make sure that you read back and have all the necessary vocabulary. Thanks for joining me for this video, and I'll see you in class.